Just hold on a second, just getting set up here. Alright. All right, shall one, shall one, shall one. All right. Another Saturday, man. Another Saturday getting it, man. Another Saturday. <laughs> On the highways and byways. <laughs> Let's go. All right. All right. All right. Sean Wong, Sean Wong, Sean Wong. All right. Make sure y'all. That's good. That's good. No shoot. Anyway. Anyway. Sean Wong. All right. <laughs> we going to face these and we going to say all praise and glorification goes to Yahweh. By Hashem. Yahweh Shai. By Hashem. Rakabwadash. Double lines to the elders and the apostles. A great millstone who were well. Sean Wong to the hundred and forty four thousand. The one third remnant men, women, children of the whole millet. Sean Wong. This is the brother Gabar Yash coming back at you with another lesson. All right, our prayers let's be at a fire straight to the point. Now, the Saturday morning getting it, man. And we're going to talk about a couple of things, all right? First, we're going to cover, uh, you know, brothers been going into it about uh, Matthew chapter 21, all right? At verse 43, we're going to break that down, all right, and show you what that's talking about, okay? And then we're going to, you know, move on to some prophecies, man, predictive programming. Lord will we can get all of that in. Two lessons in one, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> all right. So without further ado, let's get started, man. We ain't gonna waste no time. All right. First off, we're gonna go to the scripture. All right. Matthew 21, and verse 43. All right, let's highlight that. Because there was a certain individual, all right, that uh, the biblical defenders, all right, their elder brother, uh, Karatha Zabak, I think that's his name, all right. Well, when I'm saying your name right, if I'm not, I apologize. But um, he showed a video where this Jake, all right, <laughs> he was asking the Hebrew Israelites why we don't go into this scripture, okay. But we're going to read it, okay, and we're going to break it down. This is Matthew 21, verse 43. Therefore, I say unto you, the kingdom of your house should be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. Who is this talking about? When you go into that word nation, which I did, it's talking about a tribe. All right, it's talking about a people. Okay, and then if you read further, it's talking about um, how did that go? How did that definition read? It uh, it read uh, something to like, you know, it goes into a. Uh, a person of the same, you know, nature or, you know, gene, okay? So there you go. So that's got to be talking about the Israelites. But it's talking about a particular Israelite stuff, okay? Because you got two sets, man, okay? You got the one-third remnant, okay? Of course, the 144,000 and the one-third elect. And then you got the two-thirds. So on this side, all right, when the elect gets delivered, the kingdom is going to be given to the elect first because the 144,000 is going to rule, okay? That's what the scripture is talking about, okay? The one who's bringing forth fruit. Who's bringing forth fruits, okay? The elect, the men of the Lord, who you see out here on the highways and byways, all right? Prophesying his word. That's who's bringing forth fruits. As a matter of fact, let's just show you. Right here this is what I want. Perfect. This is John chapter 15 and verse 16. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit. Who's doing that, man? The elect. The men of the Lord are doing that. So that's got to be talking about the elect. All right. What's the prescribing in chapter, uh, Matthew chapter 21 and verse 43? That's talking about the men of the Lord, the 144,000 that is singing this song, man. 
See? Come on, man. But this guy say, oh, we, we, you guys, y'all don't bring that scripture out, man. Y'all don't bring that out. Yeah, we do. All right? We know the meaning of that scripture. He doesn't. And then there was an Edomite, who we assume is an Edomite. He might be a Jake because he broke it down perfectly. All right? All right? He broke that scripture down perfectly in the video. All right? He broke that down, you know, exactly what that means. So he's got to be an Israelite. If he are if he has understanding of that scripture, so he got to be an Israelite, man. All right? He looks like an Edomite, but hey, he's an Israelite, man. Got to be. All right? But nevertheless, let's continue. John chapter 15, verse 16. Ye shall not, it's not, ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye shall go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit shall remain. That whatsoever ye shall ask for the of the Father in my name, he may he may give it you. Okay? Who's doing that? Who's calling on the true names of the Heavenly Father and his only begotten Son? Who's doing that? The men of the Lord are. The elect of Israel, man. The 144,000 and the one-third remnant. Men, women, and children of the whole from that. Okay? That's talking about the elect. The more Yahabashim, Yahashad, Look, if the kingdom of heaven is promised to the Israelites, why would he take it away from the Israelites? Make that make sense. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on. If the Lord Yahabashim, Yahashad, promised the kingdom of heaven to the Israelites, why would he then say, oh, I'm going to take it. You know, I promise this, but I'm going to take it away from you. That makes no sense. That makes no sense, man. All right? Makes no sense. <laughs> oh, boy. All right, let's get some more scriptures. <laughs> well, I tell you. Anyway, let's continue, man. All right? Let's read Revelation chapter 14 and verse 1. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on Mount Zion, and with him a hundred and forty-four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. That's the hundred and forty-four thousand men. That's going to be kings and rulers on the earth in the kingdom of heaven. Okay? That's going to be ruled by the Israelites, not by other nations. Come on, man. <laughs> anyway, verse 2. And I heard a loud voice. So, and I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters, as the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. Verse 3. And they sang as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song but the 144,000 which were redeemed from the earth. That's the elect, man. Okay? That's what that scripture is talking about. Matthew chapter uh, 21 and verse 43. That's talking about the elect. And then we also going to read, uh, what's the other one? Um, I think it's second is the first chapter. We going to get it though. All right, let's finish reading this though. Okay. Verse 4. These, were, these are they which are not defiled with women. Okay. And that women is talking about the philosophies of the doctrines. Okay. False doctrines. Okay, that's what that woman is talking about. All right, and for they are virgins. Okay, which means, all right, they're not following the other doctrines. They're not following any false doctrines, man. Okay, the wicked philosophies of this earth. Okay, these are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he go goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the ooh, come on, man. Being the first fruits unto Yahweh and to the Lamb, which is Yahweh Shai, man. Come on, how you get around that? Come on. <laughs> anyway, verse 5. And in their mouth was found no gown, for they are without fault before the throne of Yahweh. There it is, man. Let's get that uh, other one. Second is this one. And somewhere. Here, 
this is the one he quoted. Another scripture that this guy said we don't go into. Okay. All right. Let's cover this one. This is uh, Second Interest chapter one and verse twenty-four. What shall I do unto thee, O Jacob? Thou Judah wouldest not obey me. I will turn me to other nations, and to and unto those will I give my name, that they may keep my statutes. Who's okay? Who's the name given to? Hmm? Who's the name given to? It wasn't given to other nations. The Bible says, and as a matter of fact, let's get it. These other nations ain't calling on the name of Yahweh Bashim Yahusha. Let's prove that. <clears throat> Malachi chapter 1 and verse 14. But cursed be the deceiver which hath in his flock a male and voweth and sacrificeth unto the Lord Yahweh Bashim Yahusha a corrupt thing. For I am a great king, saith the Lord Yahweh Bashim Yahusha host, and my name is dreadful among the heathen. So the heathen ain't calling on the true name. The heathen can't call on the name. It just says right here that the name is dreadful among the heathen. Now remember this. You do got Israelites that are scattered amongst the heathen that are going to come looking like the heathens. Let's not forget that. Okay? Let me put this closer. All right. Here we go. Put that a little closer. There we go. All right. Like I was saying, man. These heathens, nations can't call, these other nations can't call on the name. What name they call, what gods they worshiping? Buddha, they worshiping the JC, they worshiping, uh, what's that other one? Kaabazon, the Kaaba Stone. All right, they're calling on Allah and all these other false gods. So, if that's the, so, come on, man. <laughs> if the name is dreadful among the heathen, how can, yeah, how about Shem Yahweh? Should I say, oh, you know, well, you know, the Israelites, my people, they ain't calling on the true names of the Heavenly Father, and it's only begotten Son. So I'm going I'm to give the kingdom over to the heathens. Come on, man. Makes no sense. All right? Makes no sense. Anyway. As a matter of fact, let me get one more. Malachi 3 and 6. Let's get this. Watch this. For I am the Lord, Yahweh, and Yahweh, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. The Lord said he doesn't change. The Lord hasn't changed. As a matter of fact, let me get another one. <clears throat> we're going to go back to 2nd go Israel chapter 1. Let's get 2nd Israel 3 and verse... Let's start in verse 34. 2nd Interest chapter 3 and verse 34. Weigh thou therefore our wickedness now in the balance, and theirs also that dwell in the world. And so shall thy name nowhere be found but in Israel. Wait a minute. <laughs> so, what was that dude talking about? This is the problem with you Christian Jakes, man. You Christian Jakes trying to find some way to include the other nations. Say all nations can be saved. And you keep getting you keep getting destroyed with the scriptures every time. Every time, man. Y'all keep getting destroyed with the scriptures, man. The men of the Lord are going <laughs> look, look, the men of the Lord are demolishing you Christian Jakes. And you Christians in general with the scriptures, man. <laughs> Let's read this again, man. Second Interest chapter 3. Hold on. And as a matter of fact, before we do that, let's let's do this. Let's go back. Hold on. Let's go back. Let's go back to Second Interest chapter 1, verse uh, 24. Let's read this again. <clears throat> what shall I do unto thee, O Jacob? Thou Judah, wouldest not obey me? I will turn me to other nations, and unto those will I give my name, that they may keep my statutes. Who the small statute commandments were given to? Who? We're gonna get into that. Now let's go back to Second Israel three. Let's read this again. All right, we already know who the name was given to. The name. The true names of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. How about Shimmy Shai? 
We read that the heathen can't do it. The heathen can't call on the names of the heavenly father and his only begotten son. The name is dreadful among them. They don't want us calling on that name. Anyway, 2nd Israel chapter 3 and verse 34 again. Weigh thou therefore our wickedness now in the balance, and theirs also that dwell in the world, and so shall thy name nowhere be found but in Israel. The Israelites, man, can only call on the true names of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. The heathens can't do that. The heathen can't do that, man. They can't do it because it wasn't given to them, okay? Verse 35. Or where, oh, sorry, or when was it that they which dwell upon the earth had not sinned in thy sight, or what people have so kept thy commandments? Verse 36, here's the point. Thou shalt find that Israel by name has kept thy precepts, but not the heathen. How do you get around that? How? Alright. How do you get around that? There it is. So Matthew chapter 21 and verse 43 has to be talking about a different set of Israelites. The elect, okay? <laughs> well, I tell you, man. All right. Now, let's go back to 2nd Israel chapter 1, verse 24. Let's read this again. What shall I do unto thee, O Jacob? Thou Judah wouldest not obey me. I will turn me to other nations, and unto those will I give my name, that they may keep thy that they may keep my statutes who the law statute commandments were given to hmm? let's find out let's go Psalms 147 verse 19 and 20 oh. there we go <clears throat> Psalms chapter 147, verse 19 and 20. He showed his word unto Jacob, his statues and his judgments unto Israel. <laughs> Cut. It's over with. Let's read it again. Psalms chapter 147, verse 19 and 20. He showed his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. Verse 20. He hath not dealt so with any nation. How you get around this? Man. <laughs> and as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord, how about you, y'all shine? The kingdom of heaven is the law, statutes, and commandments were given to the Israelites. The name was given to the Israelites. Okay? And really the elect. Okay? Because only the elect. Let's prove that. Let's prove it. Let's not talk about it. Let's just read the scripture. I think it's Sirach 17 10. Yeah, right here. Sirach of Ecclesiastes chapter 17 and verse 10. And the elect shall praise his holy name. The elect, man. So Matthew chapter 21 and verse 43 is basically talking about the elect of Israel, okay? And we broke down that word, what that word means, nation. If you look up that word nation, it is basically talking about a tribe, a group of people, all right? That's basically talking about the Israelites, man. The Lord has not changed, man. We read that in Malachi chapter 3 and verse 6. I am the Lord Yahweh, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. The sons of Israel, the Israelites. Come on, man. <laughs> Let's go to Baruch 2 and 30. For I knew that they would not hear me because it is a stink net people. But in the land of their captivities, they shall remember themselves. Who's remembering themselves in the land of captivity? The Israelites are. The other nations ain't out here on the highways and byways prophesying the downfall of Babylon, the great America. Who you see on the highways and byways prophesying the downfall of Babylon? 
the men of the Lord, the Israelites, point blank period, man. Verse 31, and shall know that I am the Lord, Yahweh, their power, personal pronoun, for I will give them in heart and ears to hear. Verse 32, and they shall praise me in the land of their captivity and think upon my name. Who's doing that? Who's doing that? The elect. We just read in uh, Soraka Ecclesiastes chapter uh, 17, verse 10. The elect shall praise his holy name. How you getting around that, man? Who's taking on the name of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai? Who's calling on the name of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai? Who can call on Yahweh Bashim Yahushai? Israelites. And really, the elect is calling on on this side. Because two thirds, they're not calling on the name. Okay? They're not calling on the name of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. They're still in the world calling on who? JC. Going to church. Christians. <laughs> okay? Verse 33, and shall tonight and return from their stick neck and from their wicked deeds, for they shall remember the way of their fathers which sin before the glory of Yahweh Verse 34, and I will bring them again into the land which I promised with an oath unto their fathers, excuse me, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and they shall be lords over it. So the king the kingdom of heaven is clearly for the Israelites, man. Okay? These other nations, including the Edomites, are going to be servitudes, man. They're going to be slaves. Point blank, period, man. <laughs> and I will increase them, and they, shall be dim and they shall not be diminished. Verse 35. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them to be their power. Who's the second covenant for? We're going to get into that. Let's read 35 again. So Baruch 2 and 35. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them to be their power. And they shall be my people. And I will no more drive my people of Israel of the land, out of the land that I have given them. That's who it's talking about, man. Okay? Clearly. I used to go. Is it? I'll go to Hebrews 8. Alright, Hebrews 8 and let's see. It's not your hand cold, man. <laughs> Hebrews 8 and 7. For if that first covenant had not been had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. Verse 8. For finding fault with them, he saith. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, Yahweh, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. All twelve tribes, man, the twelve tribes of Israel. That's who the kingdom of heaven is for, the Israelites. The Lord, how are you going to say, see the Lord? How the Lord say he's going to give the kingdom to the Israelites and then say in Matthew 21, verse 43, oh, now the kingdom is not yours. Now the kingdom is taken away from you. Come on, man. Give me a break here. <sighs> anyway, verse 9. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continue not in my covenant, and I regard them not, says the Lord, how about Shem Yahusha? Verse 10. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, said the Lord, and how about you, I will put my laws into their minds and write them in their heart, and, they, and I will be to them a power, and they shall be to me a people. Man, clear as day, man. It's clear as daylight. Who the kingdom is for? Who the second covenant is for? The Israelites. Clear. Verse 11. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. Alright? The elect, 
144,000, the one third remnant men, women, and children, and then when the two thirds come back. There it is. So the kingdom of heaven is clearly for the Israelites, man. Verse 12 For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquity, will I remember no more. How shall I came to die for the nation of Israel? Point blank period, man. Okay. Damn, cool, man. <laughs> uh, let's go to Daniel now. Let's shift over to Daniel two and uh, yeah, right here, verse forty-four, straight to the point. Who the kingdom of heaven is for? Well, the kingdom of heaven now all of a sudden. Now, all of a sudden, the kingdom of heaven is going to go to the heathen and Gentile nations. <laughs> Daniel 2 and 44. And in those and in the days of, the, of these kings shall the power of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people. Wait a minute. But the guy in the video said, see, 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 the Lord is taking away the kingdom from the Israelites. And he's giving it to other people. Wait a minute. We, we read right here in Daniel chapter 2 and verse 44. Let's read, let's read it again. Maybe, maybe I missed something. <laughs> maybe I missed something. Hold on. Let's read it again. Daniel chapter 2 and verse 44. And in the days of these kings shall the power of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people. But it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. So the kingdom of heaven is clearly for the Israelites, man. Come on. How do you get around this? Seriously. The kingdom of heaven is for the Israelites. The second covenant is for the Israelites. The Mori Habashin Yahshak gave the name, his true name, his heavenly father, his only begotten son, to the Israelites. The law, statutes, and commandments were given to the Israelites. Let's get another one, then we're going to move on. Alright? We done made our point. We're going to, uh, you know, jump ship gears. Alright? So we got, yeah, we're still going. Alright? Let's read this and then we're going to ship gears. We have made our point, man. All right, let's get a couple of script, a couple more scriptures on this, and we're gonna shift gears. Romans nine and verse three. For I wish I that myself were a curse from Hamashiach for my brother, brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh. Verse four. Who are Israelites? Does it say other nations? No, it does not. To whom pertaineth the adoption? The adoption back to your heritage can't be drafted back into something you was never a part of and the glory the kingdom of heaven of course and the covenants the second covenant and the giving of the law we proved that the law was given to the Israelites and the service of Yahweh and the promises the promise the kingdom of heaven to the Israelites verse 5 whose are the fathers and of whom as concerning the flesh Hamashiach came who is over all for who is over all, Yahweh bless forever, amen. Point blank period, man. All right? Let's get another one down here. <clears throat> uh, yeah, right here. Let's read verse 25, Romans 9 and 25. As he, as he also say in Oseas, okay, which is Osea, I will call them my people which were not called so like, which were not my people, and her beloved, which was not beloved. That's the elect, man. Okay? And you can read that scripture in Hosea 1 and 10. And as a matter of fact, let's get it. We're going to shift gears. Let's read this. Hosea. There we go. 1 and 10. Okay. Let's read it. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there it shall be said unto them, Ye are the sons of the living power, the Israelites. Okay? Point blank here. Now let's go back. All right. Let's get, 
Let's uh let's go to straight to um Yeah, let's read verse twenty six. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there shall be there they shall be called the children of the living power. We just read that in Hosea one and ten. Okay? Verse twenty seven. Isaiah also cried concerning Israel. Though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. That's the elect, man. You can read that in Isaiah 10 and verse 21. Okay? So basically, we cleared that, man. All right? I hope you got some understanding from that. All right? Matthew chapter 21 and verse 43. So in Matthew chapter 21, sloppy, Matthew 21 and verse 43 is talking about the Israelites, man. The elect of Israel. The Lord has not changed. The Lord said, the Lord didn't say, well, I'm going to get a kingdom. He said, I'm going to get a kingdom. And then he comes back in Matthew 21 and verse 43 and say, well, I'm not going to get a kingdom to y'all. No. It was taken away. All right? From two-thirds. Because two-thirds, they're going to come back in the kingdom. Now, they're going to be saved. They're going to be good. But they're not going to be, you know, on top like the 144,000 and one third remnant but they will be saved though okay that's what that's talking about only the elect is going to get the kingdom of heaven okay the elect of Israel when the two thirds come back then they will be saved because two thirds are destined to die on this side point blank period okay alright and I hope that clears that up so without further ado, let's ship gears, all right? Let's jump into predicted programming that these bills are trying to do, all right? <laughs> and we all saw the movie, uh, Leave, the, Leave This World Behind. Leave the World Behind, all right? Saw clips of it, all right? These bills are doing that predicted programming. And then there's another movie that's coming out next year called Civil War, man, all right? So these bills are letting us know what they're going to do, all right? Without further ado, let's jump gears and let's get into it, man. Let's go to Isaiah 29 and verse 15. Woe unto them that seek thee to hide their counsel from the Lord Yahweh and Yahshua, and that works are in the dark, and they say, Who seeth us and who knoweth us? Yeah. They don't think the Lord Yahweh and Yahshua see you. Hey, the elect see you, the men of the Lord out here see you, what you doing? Okay. And hey, we're bringing it out, man. All right. We're bringing it out, and we, hey, we let now people know what's coming, okay? And basically, these devils let you know, all right? These devils, you know, they prophesying that witchcraft on the left-hand side, man, all right? That's their witchcraft on the left-hand side. But who's really been telling you? Who's really been predicting the program, okay? Who's really been telling you about what's coming? The Israelites have, and as a matter of fact, let's prove that. Go to Jeremiah 28 and verse 8. <clears throat> the book of Jeremiah chapter 28 and verse 8. The prophets that have been before me and before the old prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence. So the men of the Lord have been out here. Alright? Starting with our beloved elders and apostles and elder bishops, elder brothers and the brothers on down. And, of course, the light-minded brothers, they teach the likewise doctrine of great millstone. Been warning you, especially our elders in the palms, been warning you about this for going on 40 years, okay? So, hey, the man of the Lord has been, pre you know, you know, pre predicting the program, all right? Through the scriptures, through the word, all right? Like it tells you in Amos 3 and 7, sure that the Lord will do nothing, but he revealed his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. Okay, so the man of the Lord saw what's coming. Okay, and we tell you, all right, that's why we are here to warn you of what's coming before it happens. Oh, man, Cody. All right, let's see what else we got. So, hey, the man, the true man of the Lord, have been out here warning you. <laughs> let's go to Isaiah. Yeah, let's go to Isaiah chapter 47. And let's see. Let's see. Um, yeah, let's go to Isaiah 47 and verse 
let's start at verse 10. Isaiah 40. Let's actually let's start the top, man. All right. Isaiah 47 and verse 1. Calm down and send the dust, O daughter version of Babylon. Sit on the ground, there is no throne, O daughter of the Chaldees. But thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate, man. Babylon, the great America, is falling as we as we <laughs> as we speak. Verse 2, take the millstones and grind mill, uncover thy knots, make bare the legs, uncover the thighs, pass over the rivers. Verse 3, thy nakedness shall be uncovered, yea, thy shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance and I will not meet thee as a man. So Yahweh is not coming back to meet, hey, meet these people as a man. He's coming back as a spirit angelic being, okay? Verse 4, for as as for our Redeemer, the Lord Yahweh shall host is his name, the Holy One of Israel. Okay? So the Lord Yahweh is our Redeemer. Verse 5. Sit thou silent and get thee into darkness, O daughter of the Chaldeans, for thou shalt no more be called the Lady of Kingdoms. America is falling, man. Okay? Verse 6. I was wroth with my people. I have polluted my inheritance and given them unto thy hands. Thou didst show them no mercy, and upon the ancient hast thou very heavily laid thy yoke. Yeah, we went into captivity, man. We forgot who we were as a people. We forgot the true names. But now the name's given back. The name is back on the earth, okay? And hey, the true Israelites are back, man. All right? The elect. Verse 7. And thou sayest, I shall be a lady forever. Who's that talking about? America, Babylon the Great. All right? Thinking this place don't rule forever. No, nah, man. This place is falling. Okay? Let's read verse 7 again. Isaiah 47 and verse 7. Thou says, I shall be a lady forever, so that thou didst lay, thy, lay these things to thy heart, neither didst remember the latter end of it. Yeah, these devils didn't consider the latter end of it, man. Okay? They didn't think they would have to pay for the wickedness that they did to the children of Israel, the Israelites, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native America. But now they realize it, man. Yeah, they got to pay. All right? Verse 8. Therefore hear now this, thou that art given to pleasure, that dwellest carelessly, that said in thy heart, which means mine, I am and none else beside me, I shall not sit as a widow, neither shall I know the loss of children. That's Babylon, the pride of Babylon. Verse 9. But these two things shall come to thee in a moment in one day, the loss of children and widowhood, and they, they shall come upon thee in their perfection for the multitude of thy sorceries and for the great abundance of thy enchantments. Those enchantments ain't working no more, man. People are hip to what's going on, all right? Trying to throw all kinds of enchantments in these movies, man. But hey, the elect see what's coming, okay? Yeah, all right, let's still go. Verse 10, but thou hast trusted in thy wickedness. Thou hast said, none seeth me. And we read that in Isaiah chapter 29, verse 15. They say, who seeth us and who knoweth us, okay? Thy wisdom and thy knowledge, it hath perverted thee, and thou hast said in thy heart, I am, and none else beside me. Verse 11, therefore shall evil come upon thee. And those evils are coming, man. All right? Great days, man. It's Jacob's trouble. Okay? Great evil is coming upon Babylon, the great America. All right? Jeremiah 37, Daniel 12 and 1. It's going to be a time like no other, man. Shit hits the fan, man. It's going to be crazy out here. It's going to be wild. People are going to be wilding out here, man. And this is what the elites want, man. They want order out of chaos. Order out of chaos. Okay? Says that on the back of your bill. What they're trying to do? Bring in their NWO, the New, or new World Order. Okay? Let's read verse 11 again. Isaiah chapter 47 and verse 11. Therefore shall evil come upon thee. Thou shalt not know from whence it rises, and mischief shall fall upon thee. Thou shalt not be able to put it off, and desolation shall come upon thee suddenly, which thou shalt not know. Verse 12, 
stand now with thy enchantments and with the multitude of thy sorceries wherein thou hast labored from thy youth and so be thou shall be able to profit and so thou mayest prevail verse 13 thou art weary in the multitude of thy counsels let now the astrologers the stargazers and the monthly pronosticators stand up and save thee from these things that shall come upon thee yeah so the Lord how about she on shot is mocking these devils man he telling them hey stand out with your enchantments come on <laughs> all right verse uh, 14 behold they shall be as stubble the fire shall burn them they shall not deliver themselves from the power of the flame there shall not be a cold to warm it nor fire to sit before okay verse 15 thus said not thus shall they be unto thee with whom thou hast labored, even thy merchants from thy youth. They shall wander every one to his quarter, none shall save thee. Yeah. Nothing's gonna save these devils from their judgment, man. So the fact that our people still trying to include these devils, still trying to include the other nations, is not gonna work, man. Okay? It's not gonna work. It ain't gonna work. Okay? It's over with. These nations have had that time. And as a matter of fact, let's go to Luke 21 and 24. Yeah. Luke 21 and verse 24. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive unto all nations. Who was led away captive into all nations? The Israelites were. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. The times of the Gentiles has been fulfilled, man. The Gentiles have had their time to rule. Esau has had this time to rule. It's over with. Second Israel 69 says that Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that follows, man. Okay. Verse 25. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth of nations with perpetual just snot and read that again. And upon the earth, the stress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roar. These nations are in perplexity, man. Why does the heathen rage? All right, these heathen, they mad because they know their time is up. Okay. Verse, um, verse, yeah, verse 26. Men's heart fell in them for fear and for looking after those things which are come up, coming upon the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Verse 27. And then shall appear the smite. And then shall they see the Son of Man come in the clouds with power and great glory. Alright. Everybody's gonna witness to the return of your house child on that fathership chariot. Okay? Verse 28. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draw nigh. So our redemption is near, man. Okay? Our redemption is near. Our salvation is closer than we believe, man. Let's go down with that scripture. I got to go. Romans 13 and 11. And that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation near than when we believe. So our salvation is close at hand, Israel. Okay? So with that, I'm going to close it out here, man. I praise and this was edifying and straight to the point. All right. All praises and glorifications go to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, or Kakwadash. Double lungs to the elders and the apostles, the great millstone, but well, Shalom to the 144,000, man. All right. The true believers, all right. And the one-third remnant men, women, children of the open land. Till next time, Shalom, Kwam Yashara, and Wa'abakabal. Shalom.